Greetings, my dear friends in Christ. Today I want to share with you how um, almost everything that we learn can actually be applied in our life. Uh, me being a student of economics many years ago, back from St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science in Bangalore, economics was my favorite subject. And there's a particular law called the law of the diminishing marginal utility that we learn. In essence, the law says that as we partake or consume more of a particular kind of food or partake of some habit, the more we do that, our interest to it, towards it or the intrinsic value of it and its ability to satisfy us actually decreases. So take an example. Many years ago, I loved to eat donuts, right? So the first donut, I'm sure, tastes so good to us. And then the second one, maybe, yes. Uh, quite tasty and then the third one and the fourth one uh, it gets to even though it's sweet our teeth sometimes starts aching and it fails to satisfy us so over a period of time I I understood as I began to study um, a lot and try to apply myself to whatever I could study I practically figured out that almost everything that I was doing had diminishing returns. Nothing was wrong with whatever I was doing, just that it failed to satisfy the thirst within me. Um, till I came across uh, what I ought to do in my life. So I'm not going to simply reveal that treasure, right? I'm going to talk in bits and pieces and then come to the point. So, the journey started off with Obviously, a friend of mine inviting me first to partake of Christ and I came to know very, very little about him as a person. But as I pondered on my life more and more and more, uh, the Lord became someone for whom I thirsted for, I became hungry for. So I used to spend many, many hours trying to devour holy scriptures and because of the lack of tools available in my days I'm talking of stories which are maybe 20-25 years old um, I, I could just use whatever I could so for example I used to say the Our Father countless times as to pray whatever prayer I knew countless times try to by heart the Psalms as much as possible because as I began to do it and as I believed in my heart that my relationship with Christ was becoming more solid, uh, the desire just didn't go away, you know. It became more and more deeper. Until the day I thank God for this, that God discovered me in holy orthodoxy or I, I don't want to say this, but I found holy orthodoxy, but the fact is, I didn't find holy orthodoxy. Holy orthodoxy found me. Anyway, so once that happened, the thirst for God deepened very much, and the law of diminishing returns was just not applicable, or, or marginal utility, or whatever they call it in economics, where the more I consume of a certain thing, the the intrinsic value goes down or the interest or the value that I had towards it or the interest or love that I had towards it went down is not true for my life in Christ. And uh, over a period of time, I invested in what we call as the Philokalia. I have with me um, the four versions of the Philokalia and I read, 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 over, read, read again, read again, read again. Digest, digest. I've been doing this for the last five years, almost. And um, it brought me to a more deeper knowledge of Holy Scripture, but increased within me the thirst for prayer. That is what I want to talk about today. Yes, it developed my relationship with Christ. Yes, it developed my longing for God. Yes, I was able to subdue the passions to a large extent. Yes, all of that is true. But it deepened my love for Christ. It showed to me the real meaning and value of prayer. And this is just not me. It's happened to several thousands and millions of people 
from early stages of Christianity and the holy fire of orthodoxy is opening the minds of several thousand people across the world. May you be one of that. So let us go to someone called John who went to Abba Philemon. And this was his question. Let's understand this. Abba Philemon, uh, he held the feet of Abba and asked him, What shall I do to be saved from my intellect vacillates to and fro and strays after all the wrong things? After a pause, the father replied, This is one of the outer passions and it stays with you because you have not acquired a perfect longing for God. The warmth of this longing and of the knowledge of God has not yet come to you. The brother said to him, What shall I do, father? Abba Philemon replied, Meditate inwardly for a while. Deep in your heart, for this can cleanse your intellect of these things. The brother, not with understanding what was said, asked the elder, what is inward meditation, Father? The elder replied, Keep watch in your heart and with watchfulness say in your mind with awe and trembling, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. For this is the advice which the blessed Deodocus gave to beginners. As good disciples, you know, the same brother John departed. And with the help of God and the elders' prayers, he found stillness. And for a while was filled with sweetness by this meditation. Like I told you, my heart started uh, being thirsty and hungry for Christ. The more I prayed, the more hungry and thirsty I became. And I realized over a period of time that this is just not me. This is every person who walks truthfully in the narrow way to Christ faces the same situation. So I had to go to the writings of the fathers of the church and understand what these great men and women are made of. Real, you know, real steel, real iron is their wisdom. Almost like that. So, similarly, he went back and he practiced it, and then he but then it suddenly left him, and he could not practice it or pray watchfully. This happens to everyone. So he went again to the elder and told him what had happened. And the elder said to him, You have had a brief taste of stillness and inner work. You know, most often, Rather than re-engineering ourselves within, we are bothered with everything outside. We want to give extreme good care to the body. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But we want to give extreme good care to the body. We want to study the best, work the best, slog the best, save money the best. Everything. But no importance to inner re-engineering or no importance to inner stillness. The brother John had the same problem. So the elder, Abba Philemon, told him, You have had a brief taste of stillness and inner work, and have experienced the sweetness that comes from them. This is what you should always be doing in your heart. Mark these words. Whether eating or drinking, in company of people or outside yourself, or on a journey, repeat that prayer as a, with a watchful mind and with an undeflected intellect. Which prayer is he talking about? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Abba Philemon was talking about the Jesus prayer, which will become in us like a well of water, yielding up to eternal life. Listen attentively also what it says. Also chant and meditate on prayers and psalms, 
even when carrying out needful tasks. Do not let your intellect be idle, but keep it meditating inwardly and praying. For in this way you will grasp the depths of divine scriptures and the powers hidden in it and give unceasing work to your intellect, thus fulfilling the apostolic command of Holy Apostle Paul. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, Pray without ceasing. Pay attention to your heart and watch over it, so that it does not give admittance to thoughts that are evil or in any way vain and useless, without interruption, whether asleep or awake or eating or drinking or in company. Let your heart inwardly and mentally at times be meditating on the Psalms, at other times be repeating the prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when you chant, make sure that your mouth is not saying one thing while your mind is thinking about another. I will end this short conversation with these beautiful words of Abba Philemon. This, my dear friends and brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, is the wisdom of the Philokalia, the writings of our church fathers, which are rooted in Holy Scripture. This and the Jesus prayer will be your greatest tool that you will receive in orthodoxy. Orthodoxy is not just about, you know, putting incense or rituals like you have understood it all along. Orthodoxy is the only truth the only real Christian faith that exists on the face of the earth. Yes, it is not available in India. It is available in parts of India. In Bangalore, we have the Holy Orthodox Church. If you are watching this video and you're in some part of India and you desire the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. My name is Father Thomas. I'm talking to you from the chapel of the precious belt of the mother of God and Holy Apostle Thomas from, from the genuine Orthodox Church in Bangalore. Write to me, get in touch with me. I'm here, here to listen to the cares and concerns of every single person who genuinely wants to see Christ. May the Almighty God bless you all. As you reach out, remember, to start holy orthodoxy in your city and village is not difficult. Just be humble. Christ will enter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.